Hi, do you have PCOS and you're wondering how you can manage it? Well, I'm going to share with you three tips on ways that you can manage it with your diet. So if you would like to get your um, my free download, then which is a guide to these three tips we're gonna be talking about today, then please go ahead and type in the word food guide in the comment section below and um, make sure you respond to the message so we can get that out to you, all right? Hi, I am the Fertility Godmother, and I'm excited to be here with you today in honor of PCOS Month. We're gonna be talking a lot about PCOS this month and different ways you can management, manage it, and today we're gonna be talking about specifically your eating habits, because that's the biggest thing that you can manage, and I have some three tips that we're gonna just share with so to break it down, because I know there's a lot of information out there. So some of the things that are really good would be to eat a low glycemic index of food. So what does that mean? That means you wanna have foods that are, that don't have a lot of sugar in them. So it's really important that you limit the amount of sugar you have in your, in your diet. So eating foods like um, high quality proteins, such as like 100% grass-fed beef, or um, organic chicken foods and proteins that don't have any hormones in them. That's gonna be really important um, in order for your overall health and your success. So part of the things, um, uh, sorry about my notes in my phone today. Um, part of the things that you're going to be uh, looking at is you wanna have like your, your healthy protein um, and you also want to have, you know, a healthy plate of vegetables. So you want to, the other thing, tip number two would be to really limit your carbs. So the thing is with PCOS, I know that it's, um, it makes it more challenging for you to get pregnant, but the good news is, is that, you know, you know, your health conditions that you need to be mindful of. And so becoming as healthy as possible is gonna be really key to not only getting pregnant, but having a high quality of life. So all the things, all the steps that you need to take in order to get pregnant easier and to maintain the baby are going to impact your overall wellness and your quality of life as well. So as you may or may not know, if you've been diagnosed with PCOS, you have a precursor to, um, diabetes. So that means that you have a higher chance of getting diabetes when you're older if you don't already have it because your your body doesn't allow insulin. So this is why these diet recommendations are really important for you in particular. They're important for everybody. And you have a benefit because you already know that you need to take steps so that you can be healthier because you have a higher chance of getting uh, the diabetes. And the, when you do take these steps, it really helps not only maintain your blood sugar levels and therefore it's gonna maintain your insulin levels. So that is going to by effect um, your hormones and it's going to impact your chances of conceiving because if your periods are more regular, then you have a better chance of conceiving and keeping that baby. So we talked about, um, and please can you guys go ahead and um, comment below if you have any specific questions that you want me to help you with, I'd be happy to help you with. And um, that would be that would be great. And let me just take a peek at my notes here. Um, and again, if you are interested in our, in our little summary of our, the free download, please type in a food guide and we will get that over to you. But just remember to respond to, um, was reply to the message and then we can get that that free gift out to you so um the other thing is that we want to talk about is so eating whole grains so we, what kind of carbs can you have since you're limiting carbs what other carbs you can have well definitely vegetables so ideally in an ideal world you want to have your protein and you want to have like which would be i'm, I'm holding a plate here you can't see I'm debating if i want to grab a plate but you want to have like um a quarter of your plate with your protein, um, a high grade protein. And then you wanna have half your plate full of vegetables. So that's a lot of vegetables and it's really great to get used to eating as many um, vegetables as possible. So um, 
but that's what you want to look at. So to ideally you want to have six to eight servings of vegetables a day. So I like to just kind of space them out throughout the day. So if you're getting um, your vegetables in the morning, we really like smoothies. In fact, if you do our fertility cleanse, then we usually start you out with a smoothie in the morning. And most of the um, couples that do that love doing the smoothie in the morning, but doing a really healthy low sugar smoothie in the morning, you can throw a lot of vegetables in there. It's an easy way to get them. And then also um, make sure you have enough vegetables at lunch and then at dinner and then snacking on them throughout the day and then boom you're going to have a ton of vegetables which is going to really help your overall health and it's going to help your fertility especially if you have PCOS um, and then the, what kind of carbs can you have so um, you I don't know if you know but um, having gluten when you have PCOS is not necessarily the best thing so what does that mean it doesn't mean you have to check every single product and become obsessed with gluten-free but it does mean that you want to avoid pastas and white breads and even whole grain breads because there's been a lot of studies that show that gluten can impact um, the hormone levels in PCOS and that you get better results when you cut out gluten and when you exercise those combinations together. So, but we're talking more about diet now, but exercise is also very important. And we'll be talking about that more later, specifically on what types of exercises you can do. Um, so we will, um, those are some things that are gonna be really helpful for you. And uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you is high fats. So there's a lot of controversy. Like people are still, when I talk to them, you have to increase your fat, your good quality fats. So people still are like, really, I have to eat my fat, but it's going to give me high cholesterol. Well, it's not true. So if you're having high quality fat, then it's really going to help balance your insulin levels, balance your hormone levels. You're going to feel fuller. And you also, if you um, you can also lose weight, believe it or not, when you eat more fat, but it has to be healthy fat. So what is a healthy fat? Avocados are wonderful. I'm now eating um, about an avocado a day because it really, I just love the way it makes me feel. It tastes, I love them. They're delicious. So if you love them, you're in luck. Um, I put them in my smoothie actually now it's my new favorite way to have my smoothie but um they're they're just a really great source of fat and and really good energy but olive oil is a good source of fat grass-fed beef is a good source of fat fish but when you're having fish make sure that you have low mercury fish so you don't want to have a lot of tuna especially if you're trying to conceive because that will really impact your your um, pregnancy that's not something you want and so not only does it impact your health but it'll impact your your pregnancy so you can see how these things about being healthy um, are going to impact your your health your and your fertility so fish is good so fish what would you eat um wild salmon um some cods are, are really good rockfish is good halibut is good all those those types of fishes that they're going to be good but you want to try to go for the wild if you can, or responsibly farmed would be the, the next level for that. I don't know if you've ever had Branzino, but Branzino is a really yummy fish. It um, comes from the Mediterranean. It's one of my favorites. You can check that out. Um, and you can get that usually at Whole Foods, and they can even cook it for you. Do you know that Whole Foods can cook your food for you? When I found that out, I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. So uh, of course it's an additional fee, but if you want to get a quick, easy, healthy meal, you can just call Whole Foods and say, hi, can you uh, cook my Branzino grills? And you can tell them, you know, how you want it and some vegetables on the side and just go pick it up and run home and have a healthy dinner or eat it there. So, okay, that was a little plug. I didn't, uh, no benefits from that, just sharing from my own experience. Um, okay, you guys, so those are some three tips. Please, if you are interested in getting our summary of our food guide, go ahead and type food guide. Make sure to share our video. Next week, we're going to be talking about supplements and PCOS and how that can benefit you. And um, again, we're going to be sharing with you all this uh, month about PCOS because it is PCOS Awareness Month. And it, PCOS is the leading cause of infertility. And it is correctable. And we can help you with that. So if you, I know it can be overwhelming. And if this is something that you would like more help with, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, we'll post the link below and you can set up a free 15 minute call and I can see if I can help you on the call or if you have something, maybe we can work together if that's something you're interested in. All right, make it a great week. Here's to your fertility. 
And I'm going to give you a little challenge. Pick one thing that you can do to make yourself um, more healthy this month. And if you don't mind, I'd love for you to type it in below and so we can support you in that. So just pick one thing, whether that's more vegetables, more water, cutting out the pasta, eating less bread. Pick Just pick one, okay? And we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.